All right. Welcome everyone to Go in Five Minutes, episode 27. So today we're going to continue um, uh, kind of off of our Buffalo series and we're going to talk about something really important and near and dear to my heart. Uh, and I think this is a topic that is really important for every gopher out there. This is all about dependency management. Uh, so if you've been writing Go uh, for even a little bit amount of time, you've probably had to pull in someone else's Go package. Maybe a, a web server utility, or maybe something to help you build your command line, or do logging, uh, or anything else under the sun. The ecosystem is huge. Uh, and today, uh, I'm going to talk about a new technology that we all need to learn that helps us with dependency management, and that is called Go Modules. So we all need to learn it because Go Modules is now officially built in to the Go command line tool, the whole Go tool chain, actually. Um, and it's there to stay. So as of Go version 1.11 or 1.11, um, modules is built in and uh, modules is progressing now to become more and more sort of the official dependency management system for Go. And it's becoming widely adopted by the community. Um, so it's really important that you kind of get to know it. Uh, and this is a great sort of five minute ish primer on how to do that. Um, but in the show notes, there are plenty more uh, reading materials and uh, longer screencasts uh, out there by folks, awesome folks, other than me, uh, that you can watch to get way deeper into modules. So today, uh, I'm going to go into just a little bit about what they are, uh, and then I'm going to show them in action. So instead of reading this, uh, this whole readme for you, I just want to point out that uh, at the very highest level, modules are not uh, part of a third-party CLI, so this isn't uh, GoDep or Glide or anything like that. This is built into Go, um, so all the logic for modules is written down on the Golang uh, wiki, on the Go GitHub directory, uh, excuse me, GitHub repository, uh, and uh, Go modules does not use the local vendor directory, and it also doesn't have to use the Go path. Um, and it actually, I shouldn't say it doesn't use the vendor directory. Uh, it doesn't have to use the vendor directory. And also, you don't have to use the Go path, although you could if you want. Uh, and then um, another thing is that you don't have to pull modules uh, down from the version control systems. You can pull them from other places too. And we'll get way deeper into that in another episode. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, we have uh, basically a very simple web server here. So I'm using the Jin uh, web framework, and you can go uh, read up on that. Just go to this web address. Um, but the framework doesn't really matter. Um, I like it because it's pretty simple to write. You can kind of see it there, lines 14 through 18. Um, and basically, I am building a little web server that can show pictures of cats and dogs just randomly. Okay. Uh, and the most important thing here, though, is that I am pulling in a third-party dependency. And in the new modules system, those dependencies are no longer called packages. Um, the whole Jin framework is called a module. And then under the Jin framework, uh, under the Jin, Jin module, there are a bunch of packages. Okay, So I'm pulling this thing in. And the way that I indicate that I'm pulling it in is in this go.mod file. So when I do a go get, github.com slash gin dash jonic slash gin, then the Go module system is going to go grab the latest version of gin. Uh, it's going to pull it down into a global, on my computer, a global cache of my modules at this version. And then it's going to write down this whole line in my go.mod file. So basically this file is a list of all of the, the dependencies that I, I directly import from my code. Also, the go get command is also going to go and figure out what are all of my transitive dependencies. So those are the dependencies that Jin pulls in, that Jin requires, or the dependencies that Jin's dependencies pull in, and all the way down this tree. Okay, so these are all called transitive dependencies. And even more than that, the uh, go.sum library, excuse me, the go.sum file has these checksums. So these make sure that if something changed 
in Jin or any of its transitive dependency that the Go tool will be aware of that and it'll know that, hey, this isn't the same code that you originally uh, were relying on. Okay, so that's a nice feature too. So code can't change out from under you. Okay, so then we've got our code. So we've got a web server here. Uh, we've got a main handler um, and this just kind of prints out an HTML page. Uh, we've got a handler to show cats and we have a handler to show dogs. All right, so the really important thing is let's see how we can pull in and build and run this entire application, okay? So there's nothing special here. We're gonna do our go build, just like we always do. And that's gonna build episode number 27. Okay, so there's Jin, and Jin is taking care of serving this thing on localhost port 8080. Now before we go and check that out in the browser, let's check out how this global cache works, okay? So I am going to delete my global cache. So the, my go path is at uh, my home directory and then go code under the home directory. The global cache is always under slash pkg slash mod. Now you won't need to know this in your day to day, but I'm deleting this so that I can show what it will look like the first time you run modules. And let me put in my password properly. Okay. So if you adopt modules on sort of day one, and you do a go build, let me clear the screen, you'll see something like this. This is brand new output for, for go and go modules. So you're gonna see it going down and finding all of the dependencies, uh, both the Jin framework and all of the transitive dependencies. It's gonna find them, get some metadata for them, and then it's gonna start downloading all those modules at the versions, at the latest version. So check it out, if there is a git tag that is a semantic version, it's going to download the latest semantic version. And if it's not, then it's going to download the latest git sha, the git checkout sha. Okay, so it's like the tip of head. Now that I have these pulled down, then it does its job and it starts building it. And now it's built just the same. Okay, now the last piece that I want to show is I want to show what this uh, this local cache looks like. Okay, so sort of kind of a little bit like the source directory we were familiar with under the go path. So we can go into github.com and we can see there's like Jin Jonic and that is the one that uh, we were pulling down as our direct dependency. But then now check it out. Now we've got a versioned Jin and that is different from the go path of yesterday. Now it's a version gin so that we can have multiple versions and different code bases on my machine can take advantage of those different versions without overwriting each other. So that one is really, really important. Okay, so now let's just have a little fun. Let's run episode 27. Let's go to port uh, 8080. If I could type. And now we've got our modules enabled cats random pictures of cats, and we've got our modules enabled random pictures of dogs. And that is all without me learning another tool like Go, P like Go Package or Glide or anything like that. Uh, and it's all built directly into my Go tool chain. So you'll find yourself not really need to make, uh, make files anymore. And in your CI CD systems, you won't have to download new tools like Glide or Dep or, or so on and so forth. You can stick with those approaches if you want. And Go Modules also lets you continue to check in a vendor directory if you wanna make a small step over to modules but you don't wanna commit entirely to deleting your vendor directory. Um, and that's, that's really what it is. Uh, so there's plenty more about modules and I included some show notes here uh, with some uh, two, actually two amazing Just for Funk screencast episodes done by Francesc. I would really highly recommend those. Uh, and also there's tons and tons of reading if you want to get deep into the details of Go modules on the official Golang wiki. So that's it for today. I really encourage you to just try this out, just this app alone, just try it out and see how it feels. Uh, and if you like it, Go do some watching and some reading and try adopting it sort of a little bit piece by piece 
into your code base and see how it works and see what you think about it. All right, so that's it for today. I hope to see you soon and take care, Gophers.